بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد we find that regularly regularly in the Quran on more more than seventy to eighty occasions in the Quran Allah سبحانه وتعالى combines two fundamental obligations in this religion where he says أقيم الصلاة وآت الزكاة establish prayer and pay the zakah. Perhaps there's only one instance in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala separates the two of them all. But everywhere else in the Quran you find, whenever you find an obligation of prayer, you also find mention of, of zakah. To the point where some of the Sahaba mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not accept the prayer of the one who does, who does not pay zakah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not accept the zakah of the person who does not pray. There are many people who will pray. Although there are many also who don't pray, but there are a significant number of practicing Muslims who are considered to be people of prayer. Yet at the same time, the obligation which can be viewed as conditional for acceptance with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the prayer, which is zakah, there are many who are ignorant, ignorant of these obligations. And although, although a person may well just do it out of ignorance and not know the details of how to pay zakah, the consequences are very severe. A person who is required to pay zakah and does not pay zakah, fails to pay it correctly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes those people. وَالَّذِينَ يَكْنِزُونَ الذَّهَبَ وَالْفِضَّةَ وَلَا يُنْفِقُونَهَا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ فَبَشِّرْهُمْ بِعَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ Those who hoard gold and silver, those who hoard gold and silver and do not spend it in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they do not pay zakah, zakah on it, give them, give them news of a painful punishment. The punishment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes يَوْمَ يُحْمَى عَلَيْهَا فِي نَارِ جَهَنَّمْ فَتُكْوَى بِهَا جِبَاهُمْ وَجُنُوبُهُمْ وَظُهُورُهُمْ On that day, on that day, the wealth that they had, the gold and silver that they had will be heated up in hellfire and they will be brandished, they will be brandished with that wealth that they refused to pay zakah on on their foreheads, on their sides and on their backs. So in hellfire, the person who did not pay zakah will see that gold and silver that he owned, it will see it appear in front of him and <clears throat> it, will be, it will be heated up to the point that he will, he will then be brandished on his forehead, on his side, on his back with the very wealth that he, he refused to spend with. So zakah is significant and a person should be careful that he pays even down to the last penny, even down to the last penny that he pays his zakah. But with zakah we have we have common errors that people fall into with zakah. Even and this is this is more talking about people who pay their zakah. There are common errors with zakah. But the the reason why these common errors need to be pointed out is that often these errors will, will result in a failure to pay zakah. The first error, or even before speaking about the error of zakah, um, it's essential to point out how does a person know when he's required to pay zakah or not. Zakah is required of a person's wealth, which for us practically we're looking at is gold, silver, um, and that's particularly with women who have gold jewelry. A woman must pay zakah on her on her jewelry, gold, silver, whatever form that gold and silver comes in. Now, the most likely form that you're going to see it now is is jewelry. But any form that a per any form that gold is gold is in, and that person owns that, he must pay zakah on it. Gold, silver, and any form. Anything that takes a form of cash that's viewed as cash or currency, such as actual savings that a person has, it could be stocks and shares, business, business. If a person has business, whatever he trades in, all of these different forms of all of these different forms of wealth that exist now, they're all um, required. Zakat is required to be paid on all of these different forms of wealth. Nothing else is zakah required to be paid on. A person, for example, has rings, platinum rings, diamond, and so on. All of these other precious metals, even though some people raise the question that these are expensive and silver, particularly now silver, is, is not that expensive. Uh, it, does, it, it doesn't seem to make sense to people. Why, why are we not paying zakah on precious metals? So ultimately, and this again, particularly in the Hanafi madhab, the obligation of zakah is on currency. The zakat is paid on currency. Historically, before before the world economy, before global economy moved away from real real wealth, 
to false wealth, to false wealth, which has completely destabilized human society. Before people moved away from that, and gold and silver were, t were deemed to be human currency. Human beings always traded with gold and silver. It's only now since the Industrial Revolution that people have moved away to a false economy, an economy that's based on paper, which essentially is worthless. But originally it's gold and silver. Gold and silver is human currency. Hence, we're required to pay zakat on the platinum, diamonds, and so on. They're not, they're not currency. They have value, but they're not currency. Anything has value. Anything has value. A person's house has value, but there's no zakat on them. A person can have ten houses, there's no zakat upon them, because, because they're not currency. Although they have value, they're not currency. So that's what zakat to be paid on, paid on. A person is required to pay zakat when he crosses what's known, um, what was described, termed by the Prophet as a nisab. Nisab is what we can call a zakat threshold. Not everybody is required to be paid zakat. It's only when a person owns any of those forms of wealth and um, owns them and crosses a, a certain threshold, a certain amount, only then is that person required to pay zakat. And that threshold differs with gold, the Prophet set it as 20 dinars, dinar being the gold coin, which equates to, which, which converts to 100 grams of gold. And he وسلم, also set the threshold for silver as being 700, or originally it was 200 dirhams, dirhams being the silver, um, silver coins, which, which, which converts over to 700 grams of silver. And then you, look, you work on whichever of the two is more beneficial to the poor person. Right? There's more people paying, which at this time is going to be silver. So we take, the, we take the, the threshold of silver, 700 grams, which will vary at the moment. At the moment, I, I haven't checked, but last time I checked, it was between four to 500 pounds. If a person crosses that threshold, that now is considered his zakat date. That's considered his or her zakat date. 12 months later, 12 lunar months later, that person should now record that. It should be a diary record a fixed date in his diary. Twelve lunar months, and, and we work on lunar months, twelve lunar months later, if that person still is above the, the threshold, that person is then required to pay zakat on the whole of his wealth, on, on, on everything that, 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 that he has. The, com the error that happens amongst people, people randomly set zakat, the zakat date is Ramadan, which is completely incorrect. Ramadan has nothing to do with payment of zakat. Ramadan has nothing. For some reason, people have just randomly decided Ramadan is a blessed month, so we'll pay zakat in there. You're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to do that. Zakat is haq al faqir. It's the right of, it's the right of the poor person. You can't decide that I'm just going to fix it in Ramadan. I'll pay six months later. Your zakat date is the first point you cross the threshold. 12 months later, you check, are you still above the threshold? Doesn't matter what happens in, in between, as long as you don't go down to zero. Doesn't matter if it fluctuates or goes beneath the threshold or above the threshold. That doesn't matter. You just check 12 months later, and if you're still above the threshold, that's your date, that's when you're paying zakah. So that's the first thing to point out. That's how you work out zakah. It's a straightforward process. As long as you know your zakat, as long as you know when you cross the threshold, 12 months later, and every 12 months you keep on checking. You keep on checking and you're above the threshold, you pay zakat on the full amount. You don't pay zakat on the amount that's above the threshold alone, you pay it on the full amount. The second common error to mention that people should correct is that the zakat of, man, of a man and of a woman, husband and wife, are two separate things. A woman in Islam is considered to be financially independent. What she owns does not belong to her husband does not belong to her father. Whatever she, if she works and she has income coming in, that's her money. She's not, like, she's not responsible to support the husband. She's not responsible to pay anything towards the house, although if she does it as a goodwill gesture, she's entitled to it, she can do that. And that's considered ma'roof, that's considered a goodly act that she's rewarded for. But the, for, the jurist has stated if the husband's poor and she's rich, he's still got to support her. He's still got it's it. It's his responsibility. That point highlights that the woman is considered financially separate, independent and separate. Whatever, is, whatever she earns, whatever she owns, is her wealth, has nothing to do with the husband. But then the consequence of that, she pays zakah on her wealth. 
not the husband. Again, if the husband chooses to do so as a goodwill gesture, there's no harm in doing that, and inshallah he's, inshallah he's rewarded for doing that. But he's not liable for hezekah. They do not lump the two amounts together, that whatever she has is included within him, and he pays for the both of them. She works his has out and she pays accordingly and he works his out and he pays it accordingly where people need to be careful where women need to be careful is to ensure that any gold that she has she pays zakat on it and again this really this really affects when we look at wedding jewelry that a woman has because the amount can be significant that the actual value of it can be significant and large and it's it's possible that she has no other income possible she has, she has nothing else, zakat still must be paid. If the husband chooses to do it as a goodwill gesture to pay that, then it's fine and shot is rewarded for it. But if he can't afford it or he doesn't, chooses not to, there's still zakat that must be paid on that. No. Which then only leaves the option that she has to sell, that she has to sell some of that gold in order to pay off the zakat. And the idea that I can't sell it because it will upset my, my, my parents, it will upset my mother and so on. It doesn't really matter here. This is haqqullahi ta'ana. This is a divine obligation. This is not, nothing to do with mother, father, family not being happy with you selling off, with that woman selling off her gold. If she does not have the ability to pay and the husband does not have the ability to pay or chooses not to pay, it's still her obligation to pay zakah. And if her mother's not happy with it, then she shouldn't have given her that in the first place. Zakat must be paid on gold jewelry. So these are certain common errors that are certain points that need to be highlighted about zakat. But one last point also to mention about zakat, um, which we've already touched upon, but just to re-emphasize the point, that zakat is not paid, is not required to be paid on assets that have value. It's only on currency. It's only on currency, something that's deemed to be human currency that zakat is paid upon. Allahu a'lam, walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammadin wa alayhi wa sallam.